Commodities Confidential is back this Thursday with Jeffrey Christian, Managing Director of CPM Group, the research firm based in New York. He now joins me. Jeffrey, thanks for being with us. It's good to be back. Jeff, last time we met was at the IPMI conference in June. I had congratulated you on anticipating the June price drop. At the time, you also told me that you wouldn't be surprised if gold could spike down to 1000 but overall, you were expecting an annual average of $1,300 to $1,400 gold. Are you sticking to this projection? Yes, we're sticking to that view. Uh, I think the year-to-day average through the first three quarters is probably around $1,450. Uh, we think it'll be a little bit lower. Uh, we, you know, The gold price has the potential to spike below $1,280 uh, over the last three months of the year, but we think any spike below $1,280 would be very short lived and the price would come back up and we expect it to basically trade between you know 1280 and 1360 uh, for the rest of the year so the price of gold will average around 14 1445 uh, for the full year all right jeff i really want to get this next question to you we are in week two of the u.s government shutdown and you would think that with the stress of the u.s government reaching its debt limit and the u.s government defaulting on its obligations that this would create more safe haven demand for the metals but we are not seeing this draft gold dipping below the $1,300 mark this Thursday. Why isn't the current situation helping to propel metal prices? Well, there's a difference between the debt ceiling and the government shutdown. And right now we're dealing with the government shutdown. And I think that it's been a big yawn for financial markets around the world. Uh, people have realized that somewhere between 50 and 85 percent of the government is still continuing and, and that it's probably not as devastating. I think the m- real importance to the market of the government shutdown and the debt ceiling talks are that these events are shaking the confidence of investors and governments and everybody worldwide in the U.S. government on a long-term basis. But I think on a short-term basis, what we saw last week was that you know when the government shut down, uh, financial markets, not just gold, but financial markets in general yawned. The bond market hardly moved. The dollar fell a little bit initially, but stayed within recent ranges for all intents and purposes. Oil, which had been declining, basically moved sideways. It rose a couple bucks, but now it's back where it was prior to the shutdown. And the stock market, which had been declining for some time, continued to decline at the same pace. So I think what you saw was that financial markets said this probably really isn't important. Now, you did see the gold price fall 30 plus dollars uh, last Tuesday. and I think what that was, was that there were people who had gone long on the COMEX gold contract prior to the shutdown, thinking that the shutdown could trigger some buying and that the price could spike up to 1340 or 1380 When that didn't happen on Tuesday night, uh, those longs came in and liquidated Tuesday morning, Monday night, Tuesday morning, uh, and, and that's what took the price down. And, and that was a temporary blip. Right. And that's what other sources have told me, Jeff, is let's not look at the U.S. government shutdown, but let's look at the approaching debt ceiling limit date, which is pegged at October 17th. Is that what you'll be focusing on? Right. I think that there, yeah, yeah. The debt ceiling talks are much more important and they're much more critical. Uh, October 17th is the date where the government ostensibly could run out of cash to pay for it. Uh, uh, ongoing liabilities, and it might have to start doing triage on what it, you know, what it pays to whom it owes. Uh, you know, the reality is that the debt ceiling talks will probably go up to midnight, uh, and maybe a little bit past it. Uh, the politicians will pay play politics with the U.S. government's credit rating once again, and they run the risk of being downgraded, if not officially by credit agencies, then by the broader market on a de facto basis. And and I think that that's the real risk that we're facing in the world, is that people will be looking at the so-called government leaders in Washington and say these guys are being, you know, cheap politicians, not government leaders, and the U.S. political system is really broken and that's what's the problem and that could have severe problems for everybody in the world uh so i think that we are paying a lot of attention the the received wisdom has been that no government and no political party and no political politicians would want to do that and so that there will be a last minute um 
reprieve and, and resolution, and it may be a little bit too little too late, and you know, the damage to our reputation will have been done. But you also have now more and more people speaking more openly about the idea that the Republicans could have an end game of really destroying the U.S. government's credibility on a global basis and, and laying it all to blame on the administration. And so they could, in fact, put their foot on the accelerator and drive the car over the cliff. And and so I think there is a little bit of an increased risk. And between now and next Wednesday, I think you will see the gold price reflect the view that perhaps the Republicans are, in fact, that malicious or ignorant that they would actually do that, while the U.S. government, the administration, doesn't want to take the political uh, blame and doesn't want to take the responsibility of leadership and open up themselves to criticism from the Republicans that they used executive orders to keep the U.S. government going and to keep the U.S. government solvent uh, rather than play politics. Well, that's a big statement, Jeff, but basically you're saying we could see gold prices move higher from now until next Wednesday. Right. Now, our view is 1340, 1360, maybe 1380. Uh, in that kind of environment. Jeff, before I let you go, let's talk about the nomination of Janet Yellen as the next Fed chair. She's seen in the marketplace as being more of a monetary policy dove with what is happening in the U.S. right now. Is tapering, the talk of tapering off the table completely? First off, let me say, I think Janet Yellen is the best person for that job right now. I've followed her career since the 70s. She is a tremendous economist. I think she's great. The fact that she wasn't the front runner and that Obama was pushing and pushing and pushing on Larry Summers is a gigantic discredit to the credibility of the Obama administration. That's the first thing. The second thing is, I don't know that tapering is off the tapering. It's probably postponed indefinitely because of the weak state of the U.S. economy and the fact that the politicians in Congress and in the White House are playing politics with the budget uh, and with the debt ceiling. So I don't think the Fed will do anything uh, until that is resolved. Once that's resolved and we can see the state of the U.S. economy in the aftermath of that, the Fed will look to taper at some point. Whether it starts in late 2013, that seems highly unlikely to me, but at some point, point over the course of 2014, unless the politicians really flush the U.S. economy down the toilet, uh, at some point in 2014, I think you will start seeing some small amount of tapering. So, Jeff, how come we have not seen precious metals prices move higher with the continued bond buying by the Fed? Right. I think the precious metals markets, like other financial markets, are taking a wait and see. Uh, they have seen that over the last several years, quantitative easing in various volumes, A, has not had a tremendous effect in pushing gold prices up or in stock prices up, and B, has had a diminishing effect. So I think there is a big yawn there that you know more quantitative easing is not necessarily going to push gold prices up higher in and of itself. Uh, it will take a bigger uh, financial or economic crisis to happen. And, and so I I think that that's why the uh, the gold and silver markets are sort of not necessarily rising uh, in response to the fact that uh, tapering, which was first suggested in the second quarter, uh, is now postponed indefinitely. Jeff, on that note, thanks for joining me on Commodities Confidential. Okay, we're glad to be here. And thank you for watching. You can email us. We want to hear from you at newsfeedback at kiko.com or follow me on Twitter at Dingala Thanks for watching.